Hartzell with P2P Foundation Open Technology Transfer Group. Tonight I'm with Nicholas Mendoza from Bogota, Colombia. He's an editor for Bitcoin Magazine. He's also published in Al Jazeera and some other uh, major international news media. Uh, his focus is on peer-to-peer -peer global media and emergent innovative projects. Tonight we're going to talk about Bitcoin and beyond. Uh, hi Nicholas, how are you? Hey, how are you? Good. Well, welcome, and I'm happy to see you again. It's been a little while. Um, let's talk about a little bit of your background, uh, your college in Bogota and then in uh, Australia, and then we'll move on to some of the more interesting technology. Um, yeah, okay, so basically, I got a, um, I got a uh, double double career in Colombia as uh, in architecture and fine art. Uh, and very early on I got interested in uh, computer art and video art. And uh, I uh, subsequently started working uh, more in, in those kind of topics uh, related to technology and communication rather than in architecture. And after a few years, I decided to uh, move on, and uh, I went to Australia and did a master's of global media communication, uh, which is more like a critical approach towards technology and to the state of media uh, around the world. And specifically, I, I focus on the topic of fear, corruption uh, that is made, is being made possible uh, through the emergence of network technologies. Um, it, it, it has changed a lot of things, and many things have become possible uh, through the network. And um, I am very interested in, in the topic uh, related to the economic of, of how these processes take place. And Actually, uh, it was through this uh, process of research that I got in touch with Michelle Bowles and the PPP Foundation. In some of our conversations in the past, uh, last summer when we were together there, you were talking about this interesting take that you have on karma related to transactions or interactions on the internet. Yes, well, uh, I, I, I made myself a, a question uh, while I was while I was basically while I was traveling around uh, Southeast Asia in I think it was 2010 uh, and because especially because I was interested at the time in collaboration uh, in, across the network. Uh, how communities can collaborate and, and uh, uh, behave in altruistic ways so that uh, the practices that were currently uh, dealt with in a commercial way can, can be done in a less commercial way and more through a community practice. So and we, we have seen in the network a lot of things going on. Uh, in these ways, like open source software, movement, etc. But uh, there's also a lot of instances where it seems hard. So uh, I, I felt that there was there was something very interesting in Southeast Asia, in Buddhist communities, uh, how it was it was like a theme uh, all around Asia. The theme of collaboration and generosity and giving. Uh, you could see it uh, in, not only in the temples, but uh, on the ceremonies in Buddhist, but also in everyday culture, uh, even in the way who is prepared and like uh, cities are arranged. So I felt that there was something, and the question I made was how can, how can, what can we learn from this? And um, I, I, well, I did my master's thesis about that. I found some like basic principles 
uh, go down and finalize my thesis with a lot of questions about it. But um, basically, I found, I also realized something really interesting is that um, in, in the network, in, in digital, digital technologies have, um, have on themselves that they've been like fertile ground to the emergence of, of a lot of cases where the developers structure their community or structure the production uh, of their project around something that they somehow they decided to call farm in many instances. You can see you can see the idea of karma, like digital karma, being used in, in websites like Reddit.com or Slashdot, um, Hacker News. It's, and it's interesting also that these are like uh, communities that are created for and by very technical people. Like so, it seems like it's something like very closely connected in a way to to internet culture. The idea of karma, although it's not the same idea of karma that Tibetan uh, monks have, and that's like what I'm trying to to really uh, sophisticate a, a theory of that. How is how are they related? What what they have in common, and how do they how they are different, um, and maybe how can they both how how can how can they become more compatible and actually make make a better version of the digital karma? Maybe eventually a, 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 an enhanced theory for the digital karma can can be proposed. But I'm on my first year of my PhD, so I'm not I'm like far away from that. And you're doing your PhD at the University of Hong Kong. Yeah, but, uh, no, it's City University of Hong Kong. Okay. So there's in Hong Kong there's University of Hong Kong and there's City University of Hong Kong. So um, I I'm, I'm working at the School of Creative Media, mm -hmm. which is a very interesting research center for uh, for new media and all sorts of um, media related topics. Sounds interesting. The uh, the karma part uh, reminds me of something like the Maitreya Buddha uh, might have a digital aspect, a virtual aspect to the Maitreya Buddha. What do you mean? Uh, Maitreya Buddha is the, the next Buddha in line. Yeah, uh, it's usually represented as a path. Yeah, yeah. Siddhartha was the seventh Buddha and so on. Um, let's talk about code, code metal flesh. Uh, this has a little uh, harder sound to it than karma does. Uh, this is a seems to be quite a, a popular piece on Al Jazeera. Uh, how did you uh, conceive that piece, and then as you were writing it, what was that like? Uh, how did I conceive it? I I don't know. I I was there. Um trying to try to understand um, all the different uh, actors that come into play uh, in, 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 in the network or in networks in general and trying to yeah trying to um, actually make sense for myself or of what was going on uh, and I realized that there was like that you could like you could break it into three three groups of actors basically. So uh, one is humans, uh, which I call flesh. Uh, this this is a reference to to some other uh, media text that that also talks about flesh. Uh, this is the term flesh to talk about the human uh, component. So. And then there's the machine, the actual machine that we use, the computer, the mouse, but not only that, uh, also the cables, underwater submarine cables, satellites, uh, the modems, all the, all the hardware that is used. And then there's something else, which is code, which is completely material and uh, quite strange thing. Uh, 
and, and it's only because these three things come together that we have something called the internet. And well, many other things, but the the internet is um uh, is is uh, kind of a dance between these three things. Um, it can't it can't uh, it can't exist without any of those. If you take one component, you take code off, and well, there's no there's nothing. And if there's no no hardware, there's also nothing. So, um, so that was kind of my my way of understanding the internet, and um, and and so the point really leads to a to a to an idea which is. That we need to, we need to. I think what I propose is that we 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 start approaching our kind of advocacy uh, with a with a like by interiorizing a notion of radical diversity, which means that when when this when I speak of uh, diversity, radical diversity for the internet. It doesn't mean like uh, people from different races or something like that, but it means like radical diversity, uh, including the code and the, and the metal, the machine itself, uh, as one more actor that needs to be uh, listened to. You need to listen to the to what uh, to what these other actors. Say so that we can actually create a network that is healthy. That's um, that's more or less the, 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 the proposal. And therefore, um, the idea was to to start thinking about the possibility of uh, internet rights. That, in the sense of even uh, the network itself should have some rights, so that. Uh, no, uh, no, politi no political uh, force can should be able to to attack those rights. So I, I, and I think that well, in this uh, sort of Naturian perspective, um, who, who has spoken about the parliament of things, and. Um, Yes, I think that uh, that um, if we if 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 we uh, if we start to work on the on, on on the issue of what are the rights that software should have, uh, like being free, or uh, what are the rights that the machines should have, like for example, there was there is a law a law in the United States called the DMCA, which has. Um, which which has which forces manufacturers of of uh, DVDs to to create them with a lot of constraints, which are artificial constraints. So it's a kind of a violence on the heart. Um, so um, I think that yeah, what, what what I really want to say there is that uh, we should think about. How to not exert violence on hardware and how to not exert violence on code, so that we as humans can have like a, a, a better functioning network. The recent Bitcoin uh, phenomena is uh, has really hit the media 